Hello there, I'm Flintlock Atomic Productions, and today we will be discussing coffee houses in colonial America. An interesting and seemingly forgotten part of 18th century culture. Again, I'm Flintlock Atomic Productions, and let's get started. So what is a coffee house exactly? Well, to put it simply, a coffee house is an establishment of a more serious manner, where political discussions and more serious conversations between men of all social classes were had, with, along of course, coffee. <clears throat> so what was this coffee like in the 18th century? Until the 17th century, coffee was a rare commodity, only grown in the Middle East. From what we understand, the coffee at the time was not the most tasty of things, but it was highly addictive, as it still is today. To elaborate on this a bit more, uh, we know they started adding milk towards the end of the 17th century, and eventually at some point in the 18th century, um, sugar started to be added. And as we see down here, this is just a little thing. <clears throat> coffee was often imported in barrels and then sold to individuals in smaller cloth bags. And what we refer to by coffee is we're referring to the actual beans itself. The beans would then be grinded by a coffee grinder, <coughs> or ground down, I should say, by a coffee grinder, and put through some sort of a filter in order to actually make the coffee. <coughs> and the smaller cloth bags thing, uh, that's common with all dry goods, be it flour, cornmeal, or in this case, coffee. So, who was coffee drank by? Coffee, as we said, had grown rather popular in the 17th century, and subsequently was drank by all people of social standing if they could afford it. That's including the merchants, the tradesmen, and even gentlemen. Tea, as much as it seems that it was popular, and it was, was much more expensive, and therefore only drank by the wealthy, or those who could afford it. So we do have two examples here. Uh, this is a Virginia tradesman in about 1720. I believe he has a coppersmith, or some sort of a smith, judging by how he's pouring things, and he has something clearly smelting in a pot. And these are two sketches of gentlemen dated around 1750. So what was the purpose of these coffee houses? For many reasons, it was a rather good way to find reasonable discussion, as opposed to the drunken, often violent crowds that formed at alehouses or taverns. People owned coffee houses. It was seen as a more pure place of social establishment over the sinful taverns that many went to. Another reason being that they could make quite <coughs> was that they could make quite a reasonable amount from the gentlemen and wealthier folk. Ironically, down at the bottom. That's actually a sketch of an 18th century tavern in Boston, Massachusetts, but both would have looked similar in terms of outward appearance. And as we look over to this picture, it actually is the Green Dragon Tavern on Union Street. I don't know much about it, but <clears throat> if anyone knows anything about the tavern in particular, please let me know. And before we conclude, we must go over what ended up happening to these coffee houses. So sadly, by the end of the 18th century, the coffee house was really falling out of popularity, but it was brought back during the mid to late Victorian era, and it actually did receive its final form in the shape of what we see as modern cafes and coffee shops, such as Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts. I thank you guys for watching. And as always, I am Flintlock Atomic Productions, signing out. Hath old England of folly and sin By the Chatham and Camden Mary Burke will send Lynn Not content with the game act They tax fish and sea And America drenched with hot water and tea Derry down